Well, it just seems like Bandai Namco are insisting on shooting themselves in the foot. And I'm not entirely sure why, because when Tekken 8 came out, the goodwill with this game was extremely high. Now I'm gonna get into everything that is going on, the backlash from the community, but I wanted to talk about this email that was sent over to the individuals that run the Tekken Mods gaming website. And the email reads, from Bandai Namco, Dear Registrant, Bandai Namco is the owner of numerous registered trademarks, including the Bandai Namco trademarks Tekken. As you are no doubt aware, these trademarks are used to identify, advertise, and promote Bandai Namco's products and activities. It has come to our attention that you are using Tekken's copyright images, logos, or other visible or concealed text within your website located at TekkenMods.com without having obtained prior written authorization. By doing so, you intentionally seek to attract internet users to your website. This unauthorized use of Bandai Namco's intellectual property falsely suggests Bandai Namco's sponsorship or endorsement of your website. This practice infringes on Bandai Namco's exclusive intellectual property rights. We demand that you immediately remove all Tekken's copyrighted images, logos, or other visible concealed text within your website located at the URLs. Now they sent over the Reina devil form. So there was a mod on there that showed Reina in her devil form and they've asked them to please respond within five business days or I assume Bandai Namco is going to take it further. Dennis Stanistan replied saying, I acknowledged your email regarding the alleged infringement on TekkenMods.com. You demand the removal of Tekken's copyright images, logos or other visible or concealed text from a very specific page, which is the Reina devil form. Given the specific target of said URL, it appears that you are primarily concerned with the content present on the particular page, despite the consistent structure, layout and use of any images, logos or text related to Tekken that appears throughout TekkenMods.com. With the only distinctions lying in the downloadable files and description associated with each mod on the site, it appears selective to target a specific URL, hinting at ulterior motives beyond copyright protection. Your concerns that the use of said content may suggest Bandai Namco's sponsorship or endorsement of TekkenMods Com, where there is a clear disclaimer that is in place on the website and the page in question, stating Tekken Mods is not affiliated with Bandai Namco Entertainment. All trademarks are the property of their respective owners. This disclaimer is intended to inform visitors that there is no official endorsement, sponsorship or affiliation with Bandai Namco, aiming to prevent any confusion regarding the nature of the site's content and its relationship with your company and its intellectual properties. Therefore, I deny your implied claims that I intentionally seek to attract internet users by suggesting that Bandai Namco sponsors or endorses my website. Furthermore, the alleged infringing elements are used in the context of fan-based content creation which aims to celebrate and promote the Tekken franchise rather than to infringe upon or compete with it. Regardless, I forwarded your complaint to the author of the mod. The author decided to take the mod down. Acknowledgement of your complaint is not an admission of any wrongdoing. This communication will be made public as well as any future communications for transparency reasons. Please forward future complaints to the email address and it's been blanked up and that is from the individual called Dennis. This is a greater heel turn than Stone Cold Steve Austin at WrestleMania 17. I can't believe that Namco Banda and the Tekken team went from being the company that we were all going to turn to as the shining beacon of hope in the fighting game community after the debacle of Mortal Kombat 1 and the bad taste that Street Fighter 6 initially left in people's mouths although Street Fighter 6 definitely seems to be on the up and up at this point but I remember when Tekken 8 was coming out and we were all as high as you could possibly be on this game and I'm not going to shy away from the fact that I was one of those people that was heavily pushing this game pushing people to play this game to support this game that Namco will not do us wrong that surely they would have learnt from the mistakes of their competitors given the fact that Street Fighter had really poor monetization and microtransactions in their game given the fact that the Mortal Kombat developers absolutely dropped the ball on every metric I would have thought that the Tekken guys would have looked at that and be like right they've already messed up so people are going to turn to us all we have to do really is not mess up ourselves put out a game in a coherent state and not annoy people with finicky monetization and certainly don't two-tier it well the namco team seems like they want to become the biggest hill in the industry they certainly appear like they want to be the biggest hills amongst the fighting game players and you know what they say there's no greater hill than someone that was beloved by the audience this is like if cody rhodes turned around to the audience now and said f you this is what it feels like that we have been stabbed in the back and the community is very very pissed off at namco 
echo over this. Now, I only took a few screenshots from what is going on on Twitter because I can't even show you all the things that people said. People are very, very annoyed at this. Lars says, shout out to all those clowns who defended the $4 costumes by saying, if you don't like it, then just don't buy them. Ed Venture says, if they're attacking the community after the millions we spent supporting Tekken 7, then I'm not spending another cent on Tekken 8. They really showed their true colors in these short two months. This individual says, it's like Harada wants people to not like him or his team. Triple H says, not the Triple H, but Triple H says, haven't seen a fighting game burn goodwill with the community so quickly before. Ozen says, baffles me how Harada is good friends with Yoshi P from the Final Fantasy 14 team and doesn't take notes on dealing with mods. Square Enix knows mods keep their game relevant and more exciting for like one fifth of its users. The really popular mods even make it into the game. That's something that I'm going to touch on in just a little bit. Anna for Tekken 8 says, Tekken 8 might be the end for OG Tekken fans and kill the franchise. John says, I'm praying for the failure of Tekken 8 now. F this company. David says, go to Steam and unrecommend this garbage. And if you look at the Steam reviews, they have dropped significantly. It has gone into mixed as of recent at 56%, which is not what Tekken was sitting at previously. It had an extremely high rating, but with the inclusion of two tier monetization and with the vicious attacks on YouTube channels and mods, it seems that they have really hurt the goodwill of their games. Now, before I go on to give my opinions on what is going on, I do want to read this out to you, which I found on FDX's Twitter page. And it says, people should understand the reason for current underwhelming post-launch support for Tekken 8 lies in Bamco's recent fiscal report. Their Genshin clone, Blue Protocol, flopped hard in Japan, which means they have had a bad year and Tekken has to take the financial brunt. This all clearly accelerated the monetization plans and that's why in such quick succession there's both tech and shop with ports of older costumes, fast return on investment, and hastily thrown together Battle Pass, Tekken 7 ports aren't honestly the most baffling part, a blender sphere as an accessory, really. But these features still take time to implement and note that they shipped two completely new monetization systems for the series in just two months which means they sap development and QA time from gameplay and network which is why the issues like tornado bounds and floor breaks sip into the public builds and pluggers are slow to get punished. It will be a rough few months until Tekken team readjust to live service development pipeline but I think it will get better in the end. Our task is to not sugarcoat it and point these issues out if we like this game and wish for an improvement and I really agree with that last part now I'll go on to give my thoughts but just to reference that I think some people when they come to watch my videos they get very confused at my stances on some of the games they see me playing the reason that I'm very critical of these games and the reason that I single out specific games is because I really like them and obviously I'm going to show them on my YouTube channel but if they're doing something wrong I do think that we should hold the developers to task that is exactly what we plan on doing with Tekken 8 it's what we did with Mortal Kombat 1 it's what we've done briefly with the Helldivers community manager and it's what we'll continue to do of the games that we enjoy. I don't think that you should just sit back and hope that things get better. I think you should voice your opinion and let them know that we're not happy with how they're behaving. Now with regards to how they're treating the mods, the Tekken mods website and YouTube channels in general, I personally think it's disgusting. I think that they have really hurt the goodwill of their communities and for the longest time, like I've said to people multiple times and I'll say it again, mods and games have had a symbiotic relationship where both have been mutually beneficial. Other big developers know this, case in point Final Fantasy, and they do not step on the toes of their modding community. The more and more that you strike people's channels, the more and more you send cease and desist or take down notices to people and their websites, the more and more you point your sword at the modding community, the more you are hurting the image of Tekken. And what they don't seem to understand is that it may not take effect straight away. Tekken might still do well for a time, but it's like I said with Mortal Kombat, over time, if you keep on pissing people off, if you keep on treading on people's toes, they're going to let you know and they're gonna go elsewhere. And the thing is that Tekken is not the only game in town. There are other games to play. We have an abundance of choice now because of Steam. There are multiple fighting games that are available. Virtua Fire is on the horizon. If Tekken wants to keep their goodwill of the people, they should spend more time balancing their games so we don't get situations like this that John Ding had to go through. <laughs>
아니 이게 무슨 너프입니까? 이게 무슨 너프예요 여러분들! 아니 때릴! 아또 왔다 씨. And less time attacking YouTubers and attacking modders. I am not going to post every single screenshot that was made with reference to what Namco decided to do because some people decided to use very colorful language. But you can imagine that on Twitter, this is a shitstorm right now. And this is getting worse and worse. It's really funny to see knowing that when Tekken 8 came out, this game was riding the highest of highs. It seemed like it could do no wrong. And for whatever reason, the dumbasses over there can't figure out that they are destroying the image of their game. Yeah, you've got a battle pass in there well done yes you've got a shop in there you're going to monetize a bunch of things well done but you need to think about the will of your game people are not going to forget how you have treated the community now i'm not pointing the finger solely at harada and michael murray because these things have a lot of moving parts and it's hard to know exactly who is telling them to go and strike modding channels and strike certain youtubers and send emails out of this nature but at the end of the day harada and michael murray are seen as the faces of tekken and so the anger and the vitriol is going to be pointed at them and ultimately this is going to hurt their image so if it is namco if it is bandai namco that is doing this behind the scenes then you need to know that the image of your figureheads is being hurt that is where the anger is going to be sent to there may come a time where michael murray and harada don't want to deal with that anymore and they might even turn on you hell they could start blocking people i think i've heard that they actually block people on twitter as well and that is not a good look either this just all seems like a downward trajectory as far as i'm concerned it's really disappointing to see and it's crazy that the game game is so unbalanced and this is where they're spending their time. Evo Japan is right around the corner and whilst that is only a small piece of the puzzle here, it is going to be very interesting to see how this game plays out on a very grand stage, the grandest stage really for Tekken at this point. I think people are going to abuse Asuzen, I think people are going to abuse Dragonoff and King and Feng Wei and all of the things in this game that need to be patched out or need to be fixed and it's just very disappointing to see that they are continuously going after things and implementing things that no one really gives a shit about and yet they won't balance their game. Instead, they break their game. Now, yesterday I did a video where Harado was calling the newer players soft. But when you sit back and you think about it, can you really blame the newer players for being soft if they were soft because you made a softer Tekken. Now I stand by my comments in saying that this is Tekken because this is the current iteration of Tekken whether we like it or not but at the end of the day it's a bit funny for you to sit there and call people soft when the game used to be harder and you lowered the difficulty, you made it so that one and dones were much more prevalent, you made it so there's no consequences for pluggers for such a long time. Now don't get me wrong that's not me saying that new players are not softer, that's not me saying that new players are harder. Oh, pause. That's not me going back on anything that I said. I made the argument for participation trophies. I made the argument for why gamers may lean towards team battle games more these days. So I'm not going back on that. But you have to also acknowledge the fact that you're calling people soft whilst also making a soft Tekken game. I mean, I would be lying if I said that this game wasn't easier than previous Tekken games and allowed for much more BS. Fight. Ah, I'm dead, you know. This is Bob. Oh, 
아니지 아, 때려보세요 왜뭐 때리세요 그뒤 잡았잖아요 뒤 잡으셨잖아요 뒤 잡았으면 때려보세요 선생님 아니 왜 잡는 거야 영신을 아 벽이면 된대 벽이면 때려보세요 선생님 때려보세요 때려보세요 이렇게 대시포 한다고? 해봐 대시하면 이걸로 때려버리지 내가 맞지 이거 In the past, I've given slightly different takes, but in the most recent video I did with King J, I clarified that a little bit more, and I walked back some of the things that I said, where yes, they've added systems to this game, so on the surface, it looks like it's more complex and nuanced, but actually, it's just a bit messy and super oppressive. You've created a system where, yes, you've added something in there on top of pre-existing things, but what you've added in there shuts down so many defensive options, and so it takes away the complexity and the nuance. So again, to throw around the word soft when referring to the players, and not ignore acknowledging what you have done to Tekken is a little bit weird to me and it's so funny to see that two months in after you being on Mount Rushmore people saying this is going to be the greatest Tekken game of all time to going down the Mortal Kombat route and essentially hating this game and deciding to boycott it. Now I still enjoy the gameplay I definitely think there's balancing issues I definitely think they need to change some of the spammy moves in this game I definitely think they need to tone down the level of oppressiveness in this game because it does fall under the banner of brain dead a lot of the time like I said in those John Ding videos the Asizena pressure is just ridiculous and the fact that she flies across the screen that far even when it whiffs is so so stupid. I don't know how they overlook that and balancing. I don't know how they're balancing the game. I don't know who is sitting there doing it but clearly they're not doing a good enough job. It looks like they're spending more time attacking people that have supported their games for many many years rather than fixing the issues in the game. Now my videos might add to that and it might add to hurting the image of Tekken but as far as I'm concerned if you're going to sell us a product and the product is going to now fall under a live service, then the service you give us better be good. And if I'm speaking completely honestly with you, the service you have given us since launch has not been good. It has been one L after the other. Even the implementation of Eddie, having the ability to just press 333333 over again, I looked at it and I was like, what the hell is this? Why did they do that? You're so concerned with appealing to new players, then you call new players soft. I don't understand. It really seems like you don't know what you're doing. And to echo what King J said to me the other day, I don't think they know what direction this game really wants to go in. Do you want it to be for the hardcore like it's always been and the casual players enjoy it because you can just pick up Tekken and button mash with it? You can just pick up Tekken and play to a beginner slash intermediate level even with it being more difficult than Tekken 8? Or do you just want to lean into the casuals? I'm not entirely sure what you're doing here. And if you do want to lean into the casuals, where are all the casual modes as well? I mean, I praised the game when it came out. I said it's got a lot going on for it. But if this is a game for the casuals, where's the team battle? Where's the time attack? Where's survival mode? And why are you adding systems into the game that are going to annoy people? People find these systems somewhat acceptable in free to play games. They don't find them acceptable in a game that you paid £70 for. And so this is just another blunder on Bandai Namco's part. I'm not entirely sure what they're doing over there. I don't know if they think they're doing a good job. I'm here to tell you you're not. First of all, some of your balancing is just wacky as hell. I could help you balance Asizena very easily. Don't make her travel as far when it whiffs. And when she goes for the running 3-2, just make the second hit duckable. It doesn't even have to be launch punishable. It can be jab punishable. You can let the recovery be quick on it. Decrease the chip damage a little bit because the chip damage on it is absurd. There, it's done. It's just a regular slash kick. It will be interesting to see how Evo Japan plays out. But I've got to say, Namco, you have done a fantastic job on getting people to turn on you. Like I said, I think you've done a better job than Steve Austin turning heel at WrestleMania 17. It's a shame that it's gone down this way. It's a shame that you continue to attack modders, especially when you know what significant role modders play in the longevity of games. But you know what? If you want to keep on playing these stupid games, then the community is going to let you know about it. I know a lot of people probably came to my videos expecting me to just ride for Tekken because of how much I was against Mortal Kombat. But like I said to you guys before, I don't care what game it is i don't care who is in charge of it if they start messing the consumers around those are the people that i take the side of and as far as i can see bandai namco has messed us around multiple times you keep fucking around you're gonna find out